Hippocampus has three important structures that are involved in long-term potentiation. CA1 and CA3 cells and Schaeffer collateral exon. How CA1 and CA3 cells are connected? CA1 and CA3 cells are connected by Schaeffer collateral exon. Schaeffer collateral exons are the exons of the CA3 cell. They synapse with the dendrites of the CA1 cell. CA3 cells send signals to CA1 CA1 cells via these Schaeffer collateral exons. This is how CA3 cells are connected to the CA1 cell. How CA3 stimulates CA1 cells? The theta burst stimulation of Schaeffer collateral induces long-term potentiation by promoting the formation of filamentous actin in CA1. What, is, what are the effects of stimulation of Schaeffer collateral? Theta burst stimulates CA3 cell that stimulates Schaeffer collateral exon and excitatory postsynaptic potentials are generated. Releases glutamate. Glutamate binds to AMPA receptor first, not to NMDA receptors. Why? Because NMDA receptor has magnesium in its center which inhibits the activity of NMDA receptor. So this AMPA receptor first removes magnesium from the NMPA receptor so that it becomes active. What are the inputs and outputs from CA1 and CA3 cells? Major inputs to the hippocampus CA1 and CA3 cells starts from perforant pathway that starts from entorhinal cortex. The entorhinal cortex cortic exon inputs to the dentate gyrus. Cells of the dentate gyrus are connected to the CA3 cells via mossy fibers and then CA3 is connected to CA1 cells as we discussed earlier. I repeat, entorhinal cortex exons inputs to dentate gyrus and then dentate gyrus to the CA3 cells via mossy fibers. What are the output of hippocampus? The pathway from CA1 to entorhinal cortex form the principal output from the hippocampus. So input to the hippocampus is on the CA3 cells from the entorhinal cortex and output from hippocampus is from CA1 cell to entorhinal cortex. And which fibers are connected between dentate gyrus and the CA3 cells is the mossy fibers. They connect the dentate gyrus to the CA3 cell.